the SEO autopilot for a brand new website or a website that's say under three months. The idea is that if a website is new and it's got no links, it's not going to get no love from the search engines. Get this website found a bit easier, get some more links to it, and particularly the address, the business contact details. Because once Google, I pick on Google, so they're the biggest, but also being works the same way. It's looking for information on this website. Where, are, where else have I heard about this website? So more times it can be mentioned, so we're not overly worried about links, the more times it can be mentioned, the more likely we can speed up that the website is going to be trusted sooner. So typically we would tell a customer, don't expect anything magic to happen for about 13 months. I'm going to flip over to the screen. So I've blurred out the software. As I said, we're going to be using the campaign wizard, which is a an easier way of walking through to create a campaign. But you can down the road create sophisticated diagrams uh, of all methods of link building. I've created a folder called events because uh, I'm obviously trying to protect uh, previous campaigns and customers details behind. So I'm going to go to campaign wizard. I need to give this campaign a name. So I'm going to call it, say, Chocolate Fountain. It's going to go into Events and Parties. Uh, OK to that. Let me clear off all that blurred stuff now. So the idea of these, so if we zoom here, you can select new website, a middle-aged website, so 12 to 14 months, and an established website of over 12 and uh, sorry 24 months so a new website under 12 months typically unless your website's for some reason gone viral you're not going to get loads of links so you're going to be looking to do the foundation links so that's things like social media getting onto your local business directories and stuff like that you want to be doing that you should be doing that all real businesses would have done that so once you've done that what you're trying to do is just speed up things a bit let's get mentioned a couple of times it's a bit like um newspapers the more times you mention the newspaper the more times people read about you the more likely you're going to get mentioned elsewhere and get found and that's what we're trying to do with this software create for want of a better word, we're using some decent quality content, but create kind of like a fake buzz about you, at least to get things going. So we're going to say you're a new website, not to 12 months. And in this case, I'm generally not worried about links. I just want citations. I want the customer's uh, names, what they're known for. So some of the keywords and the entities and stuff like that and their address and their contact details. So then Google and Bing and that goes, oh, I've seen you mentioned here, I've seen you mentioned there. So a new campaign, so it's a new website, I'm gonna say next, the diagram. So as I said, you can have all kinds of fancy diagrams. We're gonna pick on one which is already established, which is the domain name stacking, so DAS. So the domain authority stacking, what we're trying to do is create some authority for the domain name. So this is going to be the pattern. These, this website's going to link to this website, which is going to link to this website. So each of these are get passing a bit of authority and ultimately they're going to be going to your main website. So that's how that works. So if I just zoom in here, so as you see, it's that site to that site to that site. So, and then ultimately here. So we're going to say next, as, as, as there is other diagrams, if you want, I can, I'll flip through them. I mean, some of these are really quite, um, quite sophisticated and quite ingenious how they work. So where's that DAS gone again? Version two. Now, again, the more websites you've got, uh, I did cover it in a previous video. You're going to need things like uh, recapture. You're going to need proxy addresses and stuff like that. Uh, I'll leave a link to that previous website. But as I walk through, you'll probably see some of this being highlighted. So I'm going to say next to this. Uh, links per article. I'm going to say one. Let me just copy some assets over. Uh, one and I'm not linking to the home page in this case I'm just going to link to two. I haven't finished this website off I haven't done it yet um, so I know those two pages are going to exist 
Uh, I'm just creating the content with Zimwriter. The primary keywords, let me grab them over. Now let's drop some keywords in. Now what's going to happen is we're going to tell SEO Autopilot what balance of keywords we want versus generic keywords and plain URLs. So normally you might say, okay, I want 20% of the keywords to be linked using, or the links to be using these words. And I want a mixture of say, 40% of these added to these. So we're at 60, we want some plain URLs. Let's say uh, 30 and some plain text, 10. Again, you can go with, uh, uh, depends how aggressive you're going with the number of links, where they're going, if they're going to the homepage and stuff like that. Again, some might say this is probably too high. So we've got 20, 40, which is 60. Yeah, so 100%. So we're going to mix of both. By adding these in, it just waters. We're still getting the keywords in, but we're watering it down a bit. So I'll say click here and it'll drop in these keywords here. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Yeah, that's fine. So number of links, we're going to go one per, pay, uh, one per post. Next. I'm going to go with a new create a new account folder and this is going to go into events and parties that I call it events and on this particular category what I want to do is use this for uh, new customers and this is for my one of my own projects but I can use this for us in this case it's going to be chocolate fountains but if somebody does uh, balloon hire or somebody does uh, limousines that that would all fall into events and parties so if somebody does wedding planning and stuff like that it's likely to fall into this bucket of uh, websites or assets because I just doesn't want to use it for this one campaign I want more posts to uh, go in if it's relevant to events and parties so that'll go in there uh, then now I want to create some profiles I'm going to go with a new choose profiles default i can't remember it's not giving me an option from new manage profiles i want to add so a profile preset so this is going to go again say events and parties And I need to get some email details. You can create uh, catch-all accounts. Uh, if you've got access to email accounts, you can create catch-alls or they recommend using Gmail. So I'm going to throw in some Gmails in here. I'm going to pause this for a second. I've just dropped in the email settings, the passwords. Obviously, I've blurred them out. I now want to test them. So if I go to the first one and click test, now, I previously did use uh, catch-all accounts based on... Now, that's failed. That's interesting. Why did that fail? Now, let's check the next one. And test that one. And that's failed. Okay. Let me pause for a second. Okay, why did it fail? Found out recently, or I say recently, about a year ago... Google changed the way third-party tools can connect to its Gmail. Obviously, I hadn't seen this because I had other... I was using my own accounts, my own catch-all accounts, and had Gmail as the last one in the priority list. And obviously, potentially, it was failing in the background, and I never, never even noticed that. But I heard that generally, if you're using Gmails, they tend to be more successful than uh, one's own account. So I thought, I'll give that. Now, one thing they've done now, you need to turn on two-factor authentication for the account, for your whole Gmail, uh, your Google account. Once you've done that, it gives you the option to do, if I zoom in at the top here, you can go to myaccounts.google uh, forward slash uh, app passwords so once you've got two-factor turned on it'll give you the option and you'll even see it on your uh, ways to log in 
once you've done your two-factor authentication it'll give the options then for you to select an app so in this case it's mail and the device don't think this really matters this is just for your own benefit so you know what ones are created so i'm going to say generate and then it's going to give you this password here obviously i can't keep that password because i've just shown it you i've just shown you the process so if you go to uh, my my account dot g uh, google.com forward slash app pa it jumps to this url anyway uh, app passwords or you can see this on your home screen ways to log in so that's what you're looking for to generate an app password and once you do this the way it works is that instead of you logging in on your main password which is obviously a security vulnerability and that makes sense with google uh you're going to generate a password for this app to use so in this case it'll be this one i'm going to i'm going to pause this for a second decline it and then generate myself a new one this is what I was on about. So this is the screen before the app password screen. I've just created that app. As you've seen previously, there's the ones that I created and removed. And here's the one I've just created. Oh no, it's that one that's in that order. Uh, so two factors being turned on and the rest is all private. I'm now gonna enter that and come back. So I've entered the password. There's, uh, so this is the first one. Uh, SEO Autopilot also gen gives you access to emails they create i personally haven't used them and i probably will remove that from there if that one's likely to be used by every man and his dog so uh using your own email so a catch-all account for a domain name you own or one you've purchased and a gmail is likely to get through more than ones which is probably being burnt over the years so i've just entered that using the app password so this is something new to me i didn't know that so I've had these running in the background and failing, no doubt. So I'm going to just test that. So it's testing the Google one. That's been successful. So we'll save that. So that's all saved. So we're going to use events and parties, profiles. So I can X that. I clear that for a moment now. So we want to use events and parties. So we've created two. So we're going to create events and party accounts. That's where all the websites are going to live. And then we're going to create a profile. And that's where, and I've called them events and party in this case. And that's where all the emails are going to live. Down the road, I may add more emails to it, depending on how successful the campaigns are going. If I have any issues, I've got these websites I'm creating. Obviously, I have access to the domain names. So I, if necessary, will create email accounts or catch all email accounts for that. So now I've done that, let's go next. So the blog title, now this is, uh, if I zoom in in this, so these are going to be the generic titles of the blog. It's going to put this base and also using the keywords. And then when it creates blogs, it's going to create subdomains. So if you imagine if it's on... Um, uh, WordPress it, so it's going to be whatever your blog name is so potentially in this case uh, what well, we got Travis dot WordPress now I'm not going to use these and I'm not going to use these for the blogs names again these work fine but I want it to be more hyper focused on the keywords I'm after and the title so I want this to be to party related this is actually for chocolate fountain so I want the the domain names and the blogs to be hyper focused on the topics I'm after. So I'm going to change these. I'm going to copy and paste these out. Now, what I don't want to do is use the generic blog titles and the generic subdomains. So what I'm going to do is replace them and that will also have an impact on the post titles. So based on the keywords i'll run this to show you what normally happens so based on the keywords and these titles if i uh, click or tap to generate if i zoom in a bit and generate titles you'll see based on the keywords which i put chocolate fountain if i zoom out it's using these here these here to actually create my post titles and in the initial setup there is the generic 
post titles there. So it uses that to create them. So I want to override this and override that and put my own in. So I'll do that now. If you are finding this video helpful, do give us a thumbs up and don't forget to tap subscribe. I'll be going through an awful lot of different SEO tools and showing you how they work. So first thing I want to do is cover the blog name, both for the blog itself and the subdomains. So I'm going to take them out and drop these in because I want it. So this still is in spin tax format, spin tax format. So we've got the uh, curly brackets title and then a pipe but I want it to be related for the words I want this website to be associated with. So celebrations, planning, party themes, unforgettable events, celebrations, trends, what's on, uh, what's in, what's on, that type of thing, party, dream celebrations. And then I'm gonna use the same block for the subdomains. I don't particularly want the word blog and all that kind of stuff. Um, I want this, to be these to be different from the footprint that everybody else is leaving now the titles as i said i could use the generic ones which is in the title setup in this in the settings but i'm going to override that i have generated all of these so i've got two screens so i'm going to copy this over so and paste this in so the post titles is going to be based on the keywords i, I want to come up for chocolate fountain so the ultimate guide to planning memorable celebrations again i want the keywords uh the associated keywords and our entities celebrations and we've got uh what have we got top 10 party themes for the year i've still got the chocolate fountain in there creative concepts for unforgettable events. So I've changed all of these based on some of the keywords. I've used keywords, research tools and stuff like that. So that's going to give me a unique blog name, a unique sub uh, subdomain name if it's on a subdomain. And the blog title itself or the post title is going to be fairly unique. Um, or should be totally unique in Venice. I'm not worried about uh, the tags. Now, the article itself, if I go and grab that, so copy, paste. So there's the article. So this is spun. I've used, um, oh, I forget what it is. I'll leave a link to it. Um, uh, spin, uh, let me see. Uh, spin Rewriter. I did do a video on how this works. So if you're not familiar with how Spin Writers work, I'll leave a link to the previous video which walked you through that. So oh, once that's done, is every time this is uh, generated, it's going to create a unique article. Now what I want to do is put some H1s and H2s in here. So I'll go H2. And oops. H2. I could copy all of that if I wanted to. I've got some. Uh, let's take. So we're going to have that. H2. If you wanted to, that entire block of titles here, the ultimate guide, and that, I could take out some of that. Put a date in there. Let's take it up to that one there. Copy that, move that down a bit. Just remember to close. So that's an open spin there. I need to make sure I close that one. There with the curly brackets. Put this in. Uh, we'll do H2 again, H2, and close this H2 tag, that should do, let's do a preview, so as you see we've got some headlines in there, I could drop a few more in I suppose if I wanted to, so, and if I do a spin, you'll see, 
So that's what it's doing. It's generating a new article on each spin. And by, it takes a bit of time, but by doing a lot more manually, you're less, uh, you sorry, you're more likely to get these articles to stick, especially if you're going to go back and do some, because I've done this uh, for events. So if I do something uh, on weddings or limo hire or Christmas parties and all that kind of stuff, I can post to the same asset and keep building the authority of these individual blogs. So now I need a title or a short post for um, PDFs and that. So I'm going to take the first two paragraphs, the short one and the title. And let me just come out of that. It's not going to give me space to... Oh, no. Okay. Probably because the diagram. Yeah, more advanced diagrams are probably allowing me to drop some. Yeah, I'm probably doing no PDF posting. My, uh, my mistake. So now I need to go next and I need to uh, put some images as this website's not even done yet. Um, I'm going to go and borrow some images from third party sites like uh, Unsplash and stuff like that. This is pixels or uh, on other projects I've uploaded them to an Amazon bucket and rename so these are the customer's own images or images I've created for my own site and then I've uploaded them to an Amazon bucket. Uh, YouTube videos, I, oh, let me just go back to the images here. So these are the images, move them out of the way. So these are the images, goes there and I want one image Per post YouTube videos I've got none you can say um, you can go and source some videos for you uh, Google embeds so if if you wanted to you could drop a uh, map in there and select I would only put one and generally have it at the bottom so let's do a preview we're having the images random a preview of the post there's the chocolate fountain so if I re-spin it Obviously, the formatting and the text will be whatever's on that uh, finished website. So uh, a uh, WordPress site, a uh, Medium site, or whatever site it's going to end up on. So all that looks okay. So I'm going to say next. Uh, to capture, I've got uh, the API put in there. Secondary, I need to set that up, so I'm just going to keep with the initial one. I'm going to go instant post. I'm not going to put these out for indexing because the website isn't uh, up yet. Um, but I want this, these to be found naturally. Uh, at least for the first three months, I tend to do it naturally. After, I might then use indexes. But I've already got the indexes uh, API plugged in. So all I would have to do is select it here and how, how aggressive I want the indexing to be. So I'm going to have no indexer on this one. I'm going to go uh, instant post but if you if you uh, were indexing and you wanted these to be spread out you can spread it out for a week or two weeks if you wanted to that's why the idea is you put these on a virtual machine or a uh, remote machine something like that because you wouldn't do this on your main one because uh, it, it would in effect tie your machine up if that's all you were doing fine uh, browser uh, and I'm gonna go I need to test this kit out so I'm gonna go 10 We'll see how cope. This is new bit of kit. I want to see how it performs. Uh, let's go 20 on that. 20 on that. I need some benchmarks. So 20 on that. 10 on that. Let's finish that. As we said, the next one, uh, campaign saved. Okay. Don't forget to uh, tap subscribe. I'm going to start this in a minute. So the way you do that is if I come over here. Yeah. So if you want more stuff on SEO, we just press that start there. If you want more stuff on SEO and this tool, there's a new tool as well from the same software company uh, adding cloud assets to that. I've got other cloud based tools, some SEO writers all coming up in the next couple of weeks. So don't forget to tap subscribe. If you did find this video helpful, do give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to start this 
so you can see what it's actually going to start doing. That's there, start. So what that's going to do, initially it's going to, if you imagine if you were a human, it's going to go out there, go to a particular website, so these different websites here. So it's going to go to WordPress, Tumblr, Weebly, and all of these, and there's a whole lot more. It's going to go up there, sign up for an account, stop, go to and sign up for another account after that 60 odd seconds or whatever the time we set up. And then it's going to go back and verify that account, log into the email account, verify that email, that account, wait, go and sign up for another one and do that for a bit. And then it's going to start posting to the site. You can actually see if I move to the bottom here, it's activity. This is what it's doing. Uh, obviously, I've got uh, IP addresses. I may have to blur that out now. Uh, I've got IP addresses um, or proxy addresses, proxy addresses, so it's going out, so it's not using my IP address. So I will need to blur this out, and I'll see you in the next video.